Hi, I'm Romina Gaburo. I work in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics at the University of Limerick and today I'm going to talk about why I love maths. Before I start to talk about that, let me tell you about the reaction that I get usually from people when I tell them I'm a mathematician. I get this usual staring look and this few minutes of silence and then the usual phrase. And the usual phrase is, ah, I was never any good at school in maths. Um, let me tell you that I think there is an underlying almost pride in what I say when I say I was ever any good at maths because a mathematician usually is seen as being either a very boring person or somebody with some problems, with some issues. So what I want to do today, hopefully by the end of my talk, is to try to convince you actually that mathematics is beautiful. I think there is this idea about precision that's being taken um, in some maybe wrong way by the public, they think precision is not cool, especially in the young generation, being precise is not very cool. And this is what is need really in mathematics. So that's maybe the perception that we get about mathematics. So hopefully by the end of this talk, I'll convince you that, yes, we need precision, but for a very good reason. Okay, so um, the mathematics that I do is called inverse problems. You can think about an inverse problem as being an, uh, a tool to let me consider this object, for example. Uh, we can think of an inverse problem as a tool to see what's inside the object without breaking the object, without opening the object. Imagine you have some very precious thing, you want to see what's inside. And by seeing what's inside, I mean you want to get an image of what's inside your object. And the way we're going to do it, we're going to use an inverse problem and we're going to use what we call, what mathematicians call measurements, on the surface of the object in order to get an image inside the object. Okay, this is a picture of a, of a baby, of a fetus in, in a mother's womb. And I'm going to try to show you how this image, which is an ultrasound scan, has been made by using mathematics. So the way ultrasound scans actually work uh, is the following, you have this machine which is uh, connected to a transducer. The transducer is this kind of microphone that the radiologist is moving um, on your skin, on your body. And the idea is that the transducer is producing sound waves. We can think of the transducer as being, if you like, the mouth and the ears of the machine. You produce a sound and then what you do, the sound is traveling through your body and uh, whenever the sound um, is uh, encountering any interface between different tissues, the sound will beautifully reflect back to the surface of your body. So it will travel back and the amazing thing is that the transducer now become the ear of your body and is able to record the echoes. And what the transducer does then it transfers the signals, the recorded echoes, to a computer and the computer then will elaborate the signals and then the mathematics can be into your equation here and produce a beautiful image, the beautiful image we've seen before. So really what's going on, we are looking at the mathematical equation, we are doing what we call an inverse problem. So mathematicians in general will try to solve this equation which is called the wave equation. We are dealing with the wave, the wave is traveling down, heat of the heat off uh, your tissues and get reflected back to the surface. So what we are going to do, what mathematicians will try to do, will try to solve this equation. A mathematician that's working inverse problems is not going to solve the equation, but is going to use information about the solutions. Remember, we record the echoes, so we have information about the solution on the surface of the human body. And what we try to recover is this coefficient in red, C, which is the speed of the wave. So the wave will have a different speed depending on which tissue it went through. So having, being able of recovering the different uh, um, speeds inside the body will give us an image, the beautiful image we've seen at the very beginning. Let me show you a different picture, a completely different scenario. And I want to show you that in this completely different scenario, you use exactly the same maths. So here you have a picture of what's going on uh, below the surface of the earth. So imagine uh, you're working for an oil company 
an oil or a gas company and you're looking for oil or gas reserves. So before you drill, and believe me, drilling is very expensive, before you start drilling, you really want to know roughly where the oil reserve is. And so getting an image of what's going on underneath the earth makes sense. And this is exactly the same principle we, we've seen at the very beginning when we were looking at the ultrasound scan. Let me show you what we do here. Remember, we need waves in order to produce an image. So in order to produce wave, geophysicists uh, produce what we call shock waves. So we produce a very localized explosion. The explosion will, will um, produce shock waves. The waves will start to travel below the earth, below the surface of the earth until they hit a different uh, a rock or they'll hit the oil reserve and then they start to reflect off. Again, they travel up to the surface and we record, we record again uh, the waves like we did, like we did before. Uh, the only thing is that now we are going to be using different, uh, a different machinery here to record uh, the echoes and we're going to use what geophysicists call uh, geophones. But once we record the, the echoes, what we're going to do, we're going to use the same mathematical model to produce the image that we just see. So this is just to remind you about the model that we're using. We are not solving the equation. We are using information about the solution of the equation to get what we call the coefficients of the equation, which is an extremely difficult, actually, uh, problem to solve. Uh, people have been working on these problems uh, uh, since 15, for 50 years. In fact, we've been using ultrasound scanning for almost 50 years nowadays, but there's still need to improve this type of images. We want to be very precise about the image we have, for example, inside our body. Satellites actually use the same technique. This is an image, a topographic image of Ireland that's been taken by a satellite. You can even zoom in and do a little bit better. You can see what's going on around, uh, uh, for example, Dublin Bay. And this image has been taken by using exactly the same technique that we've seen in the first two images. It's exactly the same mathematics. In this case, you're going to be using a satellite, so an antenna. You're going to be moving your satellite uh, across the Earth. You're going to be sending down radar, uh, microwave radiation. You record the signals that have been scattering from the target and you're going to be creating your image. We've been working on this uh, radar imaging and we'll be, we've been doing something quite new actually to improve uh, um, the resolution of, of the image, which is something you want to improve. You want to have a clear image of what's going on. So the idea is uh, that uh, this rectangular array is just a simplification of how a satellite will look like and down on the ground you have your target that you want to, that you want to recover, that you want to image. The idea is that your target could be lying near a, near a building for example, so we can think that near your target you've got a vertical wall. The idea is that by having a vertical wall near your target, you enhance the resolution because um, you allow different views of the target by allowing more reflection from the source to the target, back to the source. And this is something that's been going on here and we've been testing uh, our method by just a very simple experiment. For example, this is just what we call a bump function. Imagine you have, uh, um, imagine you have a very little object on the ground that you want, like a dot. Um, very small thing on the ground you want to, to image. And so by using our method, this is the image we get. Now, you've got your wall and in between the two dots you have uh, your, uh, your satellite flying along a straight line. And the image you get on the left hand side is the actual real image, the dot you've got on the ground. And the right hand side is what we call an artifact, something that shouldn't be there. Imagine that, for example, is the screening for a breast tumor. So you have the actual tumour on the left hand side and on the right hand side there's something that shouldn't be there, you don't have... Um, it's like if you've got two tumours, one is real, the other one is something fake that comes in because maths is not perfect, at least not yet. Um, but by using actually the, the extra tool that's the vertical wall we've got near the target, we got rid of the artefact. And so this is quite promising because uh, um, it shows you really how you can enhance every day really by using maths, the type of images you want at the end. So let me just show you these uh, pictures because I think it's funny. Bats use uh, 
um, ultrasounds every day. They don't know the maths, but they use the reflections of ultrasounds uh, uh, for hunting. So really what I want to say to conclude is that, uh, well, inverse problems, mathematics, yes, they require precision, but not because they want to be boring, they require precision because they need to perform in a very precise way. If you think about the image that uh, you, you want to have when you go to a radiologist, you really want to have a very precise image of what's going on inside your body, so you need to be precise. And really, I think uh, mathematics and science in general uh, can be beautiful and they can really reveal astonishing uh, things about uh, the world around us. And I think most importantly, uh, they can reveal to us uh, uh, very deep ideas about life. Thank you.